second lesson John chapter 19 verses 25 to 27 now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved he said unto his mother woman behold thy son then said he to the disciple behold thy mother and from that hour that disciple took her into his own home whenever anyone seeks to know what you benefit from brother of the cross and star tell such a person that whosoever practices the word of God is his child. You should further disclose to the person that you are the child of the Father and that you are one with him so long as you practice his word. What is called brought out of the cross and star has his action as recorded in the second lesson not confirmed to what he earlier said in the first lesson? Weigh the similarities and differences of these two lessons. Even during his agony on the cross, he still kept to his words. He handed over his mother to the disciple whom he loved most. The disciple, in turn, took Holy Mary home and cared for her. Remember that his carnal brothers and sisters were all there. He did not hand his mother to them because they neither believed in or practiced the word of God. So John, his disciple, took Holy Mary home. This is practical brotherhood. Nothing can shake you in the kingdom if you are truthful and faithful in the word of God. But you would go without any benefit if you are crafty. Spiritual chorus. And work hard, work hard. For a man's work is considered as a means of salvation. In the days of old, God used to pick people from everywhere as representatives for one job or the other. This is also what is happening in Brother of the Cross and Star. I used to ordain people at random, but the situation now has changed. What will be happening now is that only the doers of God's word and lovers of God will be ordained or will be rewarded. There will be no appointment for you if you do not practice the Father's injunctions. Also, you would not be considered as a child of the kingdom. This is the yardstick for judgment. Even if you sleep in the temple of God every day, you would not be rewarded so long as you fail to practice the word of God. Recall the story of Eli, the prophet of God. His children were neither believers nor worshippers of God. They slept with the women who came to worship God and did several other abominable things. Yet their father did not rebuke them. So God who can create and recreate chose Samuel in the place of Eli and his two sons to serve him. Eli had thought that after his death, his two sons would take over the priesthood. But he thought like a man. Nobody can claim that God's work cannot continue without him. Also, remember that when Elijah cried to God, complaining that all the prophets of God had been killed, leaving him alone, and that the two and that he too was being pursued. God disclosed to him that he has reserved 7,000 people for himself. 
who had never bowed to Baal? Did Elijah have the slightest knowledge that God had reserved for himself, 7,000 people? God does not consider your beauty or wealth, but your uprightness, your love for him, and, and degree of obedience to his words. God is the rewarder of all good works. Anyone who loves God and practices his injunctions would not commit fornication, would not eat fish or meat, and would not drink wine or liquor. You can see how God allowed Eli and his children to reveal all that will befall Israel and his family to Samuel, who was only a kid then. Therefore, do not hope on any mundane possession or position. Do not also put your hope on your children or parents. That is why it is said that children of rich parents hardly ever become successful. God sometimes takes away whatever you put, whatever you put the whole of your life in, which is not connected with him. This is confirmed in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 5 to 8. It said, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service, as men pleaser, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord, and not to men knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth the same shall he receive of the lord whether he be bond or free do not behave as though you are serving a human being let all your services be rendered as though you are serving christ for God alone is the rewarder of all good works. If you are not recognized by human beings, are you also not recognized by God? So, you should not render high services in the, fee, in the fold. Do not seek the praises or exaltation of men. Recall that after the resurrection of Christ, he asked Peter whether he loved him more than all things. Peter answered affirmatively. This affirmation was true because if he did not love Christ, he would not have carried on with his work when it was handed to him. So, love is the weapon. If you truly love God, you would surrender yourself to his will and service. If you are devoid of the truth of God in you, if the entire church is handed over to you to manage, you will abandon it for other things. Whatever you do for a person who does not love God amounts to waste of resources. The real owners of the kingdom of God are those who love and do the will of the Father. To this, group of people is given the key of the kingdom. Refer to the golden text again. Golden text, John chapter 14 verse 21. He that art my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself in him. I know that you have ears to hear. Do not place your precious pearl before swine. Do not waste your resources on unbelievers and those unprepared to serve God, for it would be effort in futility. Whenever you see a little girl or boy who loves and serves God, 
Do not fail to give such a child any good thing you have. Such a gift is accompanied with great reward. Have you, have you who serve God with craftiness and tricks understood what is written in our golden text? I am not the one to judge you, but the word of God had started it. You are enjoined to work hard for your handiwork will be used in judging you. If you do good work, God will recognize you whether or not people praise you. God will reward you if you serve him diligently. God knows those who, those of you who loves him and will love you till the end. That is why God loves and glorifies Christ. Nobody can promote, protect, or make you to be prosperous apart from God. No government or individual can save you. Do not open any person or group of persons. Your parents' past achievements cannot grant you entry into the kingdom. The only thing that gives you credit is your good works. An illustration reward for diligent service. Beloved, here is an illustration in support of this gospel. There was once a king who has two sons. One day he called the older son and told him that all his wealth, including his throne, would be handed over to him if only he could fulfill the conditions of being in 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 the, of being initiated into a cult of which the king himself was a member. The son thought for a while and accepted the condition. Next, the king sent for his second son and told him the same thing, but he objected. He declared to his father that he was a man of God and would forever remain so. Seeing that the boy was very strong in faith, he decided to leave him alone. The boy continued to serve his God faithfully until it came to the time when their father died. Along the line, he got married and was blessed with a son. His elder brother by that time had had a son also. As a matter of fact, the elder brother would not like his son to serve God but to join him in his occult practices. On the other hand, the man of God taught his son about the ways of God. They all continued living until it came to the time they died and left their son behind. See Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. It said, Therefore all things whatsoever he would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. The son of the elderly brother took over all his father's possessions and the throne, whereas the younger brother's son isolated himself from them. He went and settled in the forest. He would only come from there to serve in the king's palace in the daytime. He was so humble and honest to everybody in the king's palace. At the same time, he did not forget all the instructions given to him by his late father. He continued in this manner until one day when the king was able to recall the good services rendered by this man in his palace. On inquiry, he was informed that the man lived in the forest and often came from there to serve in the palace. Beloved, I am giving you this illustration in order to let you realize that there is no particular service no matter how 
little you render to God without tremendous reward for you. Hence, you must be diligent and steadfast in your good services. When the king was informed of the person who had been rendering good services in his palace, he demanded to see him personally. When the young man reported for duty the following morning, he was told of the king's demand to see him. He immediately prostrated and was almost crawling to meet with the king. As soon as the king saw him, he ordered that a well-furnished apartment be given to him. Clothes and other household property were given to him to make him very comfortable. In spite of this, he did not stop to worship God and to serve him diligently. He continued to live a humble life, rendering good services even to the members of the king's cabinet and the villagers alike. He was never interested in the furnished apartment. His, an, his entire mind was on serving God and others. Later in the day, he would return to the forest to sleep as well. When the king was about to die, he made a will that the man would be the one to inherit his throne, irrespective of his numerous children. Finally, when the king died, a family meeting was held to decide who was to inherit the king's throne. All the children, women, men, young and old, unanimously voted for this young man. By this time, the man himself was not aware of his enthronement. When it was time to install him as the next king of the village, the people sent for him and declared him their king. In spite of this status as a king, it did not prevent him from serving God and the people faithfully. He stooped down to serve members of his cabinet with food when they were hungry. He would personally cook for them. Everything about him was so kind and simple. He did not mind his position. He continued to serve God devotedly. That is what is meant by leadership by example. And because of this, and because of his way of leadership, people in their neighboring villages became so loyal to him and asked for extension of his domain to cover them. Beloved, this illustration is to inform you of the need in serving God and humanity diligently and without necessarily seeking for recognition. All what you need to do is to be diligent and steadfast in serving God. Do not expect anybody to recognize you, for God is watching you, and in due season you will reap the fruit of your labor. Think about this statement of our Lord Jesus Christ as contained in the golden text that whosoever knows whosoever knows his commandment and keeps it is the one that loves him and that his father will love such a person therefore be steadfast in your diligent service for in due season you will be rewarded bountifully. A spiritual chorus. Because of his good services to God, Abraham was called a friend of God. Beloved, that is what I have for you. What qualifies Abraham as a friend of God was his good deeds. Therefore, if you keep the injunction of God by not stealing, not eating fish, 
or meat. If you love one another and honor everybody, you have loved God and Christ, it means you are the one to be revealed along with Christ when he is revealed. This is what is meant by leadership by example and this is the only system that will endure forever. Therefore, do away with the idea of wanting people to recognize you. Continue in your services to God for in due season you will be very surprised of what will come your way as a reward. An illustration on benevolence. Beloved, you may also recall an illustration I once gave you about a certain young man who was a trader. It happened that whenever he comes to sell his wares at Calabar, he would first of all stop at Greek, at Creek Town, and distribute gifts either in goods or money to the poor people. He also went on to settle disputes among the villagers. Also, on his way back, he would stop there once more and do the same thing. It so happened that those villagers became so loyal to him and considered him as their chief and helper. During the colonial period, some British officials went there on inspection and demanded to see the chief of the community. The people informed them that their chief was away and would soon return. On his return, the whole village went to the white man and informed him of the arrival of their king. From that day, the man, King Ayo, became the first paramount ruler of that community. Imagine how a man from another community was made a ruler in a different community. Right from the day his name became so popular, he is that King Ayo you have been hearing of it does not it does not mean that there was no popular person in the world of that community for kingship what matters much was the spirit of honesty and benevolence if you doubt this story i would want you to go and confirm this yourself in creek town by the time he was helping the people. He never knew the outcome. He did not help the people with any intention to become a king. What do you think was responsible for his popularity being selected as a king? It was because of his benevolence. That is exactly what is needed in the new fold, in the new world. During this time of politics in the country nothing stops anybody who behaves like this man from ruling the country the requirement from everybody in the entire world is love honesty mercy humility and kindness brethren i will not take you much further a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise let those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Holy Spirit has, depart, has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.